the beginning development of the next Zelda game is a very interesting one at that. A sub-project was started by a programmer from Nintendo named Kazuaki Morita, who started developing a Zelda-esque game based on one of the Game Boy development kits. This side project caught the interest of many other development team members, including Miyamoto and Tezuka themselves, and they joined Morita during the After Hours and saw the project's promising results of the continued development. After the release of A Link to the Past, Takashi Tezuka requested permission from Nintendo to create a handheld Zelda game on the Game Boy, which was supposed to be a port of A Link to the Past, but was developed into an entirely different game. The project was greenlit, and the development team behind A Link to the Past came back together to work in full force. The development of the Game Boy game only took 18 months to complete, and the end result that we got was The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, which was released in 1993. The game takes place as a sequel to A Link to the Past, and Link sails out into the sea that is far away from Hyrule to locate newer adventures. One night, a storm erupts over the ocean where Link is traveling on, and the power of the storm causes his ship to crash at a nearby land called the Koholan Island. Upon awaking from being unconscious, Link learns of the island's inhabitants such as Terran and Marin, and a mysterious owl who tells him that Koholan Island is being terrorized by a group of enemies under the allegiance of this dark being known as the Nightmare. In order to save Koholan Island, Link must travel around the place and locate eight dungeons that hold the eight instruments of the sirens to summon the windfish and for it to save the man from any further threats. The gameplay for this game is like a link to the past but it seems to go back to the more simplistic foundation of the first game, based on the handheld limitations for a console. The game wasn't as heavily dark and brooding as the Link of the Past, but it was one that was in an even balance between the light and dark natures of the series. Most of the enemies were based on fan service from Mario games, like there being Piranha Plants and Goombas as regular enemies, and cameos from Yoshi, Jim Tomp, Ork, and Kirby from his own video game series. Despite this game having cameos at various properties of the Nintendo brand, and going back to the more simplistic nature of the first game, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening became another successful entry, and spawned a director's cut version on the Game Boy Color, known as Link's Awakening DX. Plus, that game is available on the 3DS Virtual Console at this point. The series proved to work well with consoles and handhelds, so no matter which platform you look at, it seems like Nintendo has placed the franchise in good hands. And here we are, gamers. Right back in front of the Earth Temple. It's time for us to go in. Hey everybody, it's Double RPG here, and welcome back to another episode of Double RPG Let's Play with The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword on the Nintendo Wii. In today's episode, we are going to go inside the Earth Temple finally, and we are going to experience what is inside of the place. We won't get through it all, but it's time for us to explore it. So let's go ahead and get on with this episode that's already in progress. And we're going to make our way to the door, and we're going to put that key inside of the lock there. And we are going to open up this lock. And we're going to go inside and explore the place, finally. So yes, this is temple number two, and it seems kind of hot in here. Kind of hot and muggy. It, because, let's face it, we're inside of a volcano, particularly, so we will brave the volcanic sm or volcanic mugginess while going inside of this place. Hopefully we will not run into Girahim, but I strongly doubt it. But hopefully we won't have to fight him. Anyway, we're inside of here, and of course this is the Earth Temple. But I would hardly call it an Earth Temple because, let's face it, we're surrounded by a sea of lava, it seems. But yes, another really cool temple that doesn't really look that... that doesn't really look the same as many other temples from past Zelda games. Of course, the temples in this game, they're not going to look the same as past Zelda games because each temple is tailored towards the functionality of the Wii, of the Wii Motion Plus, so that's actually good to keep the temple ideas fresh, or to keep the designs of the temple fresh. Die. And I got a chew trying to, trying to grab on me. And what do we got right here? Oh, we got ourselves a treasure chest, but maybe some rupees? Yes, got uh, red rupees right here. 
Very good. We might be able to get 800 if we're inside this temple. Or we might be able to get up to the amount of 800 while we're inside here. Get rid of the keys disease that's here. I don't want to deal with any more of these critters. But I think there was a magma somewhere around here. And I think he wants to give us some valuable information, but let's see if we can find him. Oh, wait a minute, he was right there. He just appeared right behind me. Cool, we actually do need those cards. I don't know why I lost so many cards in the previous episode. Get off me, Red Juju. Nobody likes you, Red Juju. And just look how small of a hole they can actually dig themselves upon. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk to him. My partner's gone missing, and those red guys are everywhere. I never should have come here. Oh, it's you again! Come all this way in search for, of your friend, eh? That reminds me, before I came in here, I saw a weird-looking blonde girl get dragged away. But don't even dream about going to the rescue. Those baddies are everywhere! If you want to live too, live again one day, you should head for home, pal. Oh, not to worry about me. Besides, we came for our friend and we need to make sure that she is okay so we can take her home. But if she is to play, if, if she is to have a big role, then we're just going to have to abide by it. And gosh, is it really hot, uh, really hot when we get close to the magma. Okay, here is another, here is another gimmick that we can actually unleash if we just slash this rope here. And what does that do? Oh, I see, it actually tries to lower the bridge here. And I would guess that we need to do it for the other one right here. Does that complete it? No, it does not. There's actually a third contraption at the right here that we actually need to use our beetle to snap the rope off. Very good. And that should lower the rest of this bridge. And rightfully so. Very cool. Very cool puzzle design right there. Okay, we got ourselves a new enemy coming up right here. Master, I am detecting new enemies ahead. They appear to be creatures of very significant physical ability. Press C to target the, an enemy, then down to call me. I will share any data I have on that enemy. Yeah, we already knew that. But yes, we have a new enemy here. We got ourselves a Lizalfos. Another enemy that has originated from Ocarina of Time, but with this type of Lizalfos, he has a big huge gauntlet on his hand. And Fee is telling us that this unmistakable monster is equipped with an arm guard. Well, an arm guard. And it's made of hard iron. Great physical prowess makes it difficult to predict its movements. And you will need to anticipate the direction of its arm guard to successfully land an attack on the exposed angle. What? It's not supposed to go on an angle. Well, if, it, it, if we need to attack the enemy at an exposed angle, then I guess that's what we're going to do. But of course, we have defeated zero type, or uh, the, we have defeated zero type of this enemy. And yes, this guy. Oh dang it! He he just used a Shoryuken on us. But don't worry, we just have to do a slash, and we just need to predict where he's actually going to hide himself at. And that's when we can try to attack at the exposed angle. But also, after we defeat him, we actually get a new collectible right here. And we got a lizard's tail. It's the tail of a large lizard with the spiked ball on the end. And of course, that Lizalfos has a spiked ball at the end of its tail, if you just check from the, the tail spin that he did. Sure, it's a little gross, but you never know when you might need one. I guess. So yes, we got ourselves a lizard's tail. Which seems pretty cool enough. Alright, got a little more rupees, and we got ourselves another piece of heart. And we got ourselves some more insurance right here. Quite a huge amount right here. 16. Okay, that's a new enemy right there. The one that has all the puff cheeks. But evidently, we're not close enough to get an analyzed reading. So, we're just going to have to leave it alone, it seems. Okay, we got some Deku Seeds inside of that hole. Actually, what we want to do is we actually want... We're actually going to need to target the bombs on here. Because with the bombs on here, that will break open... Or that will break that mask. And that will make that ball 
roll right towards us to where we can actually use that as a platform that we can travel across here in the lava. Another very clever puzzle idea. And as you can tell, we're actually riding on this thing. But be careful not to stray too far. Ouch. You're going to pay for that. Oh, God. Dang it. I'm trying to identify you so I can know what exactly you are. So, anyway, let's go ahead and jump over here. Maybe we can... Blast! I must have dropped it earlier! Hey, nice timing, pal! It's me, Lead! You showing up here must mean we're connected somehow. You know, like fate or something. Anyways, do me a favor and get my bomb bag, okay? I was behind that rock looking for treasure when those creeps showed up. I panicked and hit the road, but it looks like I dropped it. It's a bag for carrying around bomb flowers. I can't imagine not having one. Oh, hey. I guess I don't have to imagine it, because I lost mine. Anyway, it's back there. Do me a favor and get my bomb bag back, will you? Okay. But first things first, I want to identify this enemy. Target locked. This is a magma spew, and this odd creature is quiet at home in magma. It stores and processes gas produced by the magma into a flaming projectile that it then spits out. Cowardly by nature, it sits with its eyes just out of the lava in order to detect any danger and flee if necessary. Okay, so that is quite some numerous information that we have to know about it. But anyway, let's go ahead and defeat it go ahead and get on here. So yeah, as you would have guessed, we would need to get ourselves a bomb bag inside of this temple. Dude. Okay, finally, we managed to get ourselves a heart back, and that's the way that you kill the magma spumes, is that you have to use this big huge boulder to roll onto them. Now, let's see. Actually, we do need to climb this way. Oh, look what we got here. Red Baboclin. And he was pretty much just easy kill right there. Easy squeezy, lemon, no, I mean, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? <laughs> All right, now, in order to get that, in order to get that pathway open, we actually need to roll a bomb this way. And by doing that, that will open up that pathway for us. And now it's time for us to go collect that bomb bag. Definitely for sure, because we're definitely gonna need it if we're gonna wanna get through this temple. We'll open up this door. And it looks like we got ourselves a couple of Zalfos for us to defeat. And of course, we're going to get locked in when we're trying to get this special item. Anybody know a sense of deja vu here with uh, Ocarina of Time? Hey! What? Okay, finally, we got rid of one Lizalfos. And make sure to grab the heart. Dang it, I did not grab the heart. It's all your fault, Lizalfos. You other Lizalfos, get over here. Dude, enough with that. Here, why don't I just do this? And I'll do this to finish you off. Gracefully, I did. And that finally takes care of that second Lizalfos. And after its defeat, we actually do get ourselves a treasure chest here, finally. And what could be inside this treasure chest, I wonder? Well, we don't know until we find out, right? Is it what I think it is? Is it the bomb bag? Yes, it is. And we found a bomb bag, and you can store bombs in this bag and carry them with you to use later. Now that you can carry bombs with you, there's a good chance you can get to places you haven't explored yet. See if Lead will lend it to you. I'm pretty sure he's going to lend it to us since we have obtained the bomb bag for him. So yeah, I think he's going to be a nice guy and we're going to have the bomb bag for ourselves. And trust me, I definitely could use a bomb bag. And we're definitely going to need a bomb bag if we're going to want to go back to Farron Woods and blow up some of those blow up some of those walls that we haven't even gained ourselves access to quite yet. But we'll have to see if Lead will actually lend us lend it to us. Hey, you found my bomb bag. Sorry to put you through that. I guess I owe you one now. So let me have it. What? What's this now? 
You want to borrow it so you can go deeper into the volcano? Oh, right. You're looking for your friend. You sure have put yourself out there getting this far. That reminds me. How's my pal? Oh, he's worried. He's worried? About me? What kind of pal am I? Putting him through that. You must be worried too, not knowing if your friend's dead or alive. I'm not letting you borrow my bag though. Nope, I'm giving it to you. Just don't blow yourself up. So we got ourselves the bomb bag and Led was kind enough to give it to you. So make sure you take good care of it. Oh, that we will. So the bomb bag is now for us to have. Now you've got my bomb bag. Go find your friend. And I'll definitely go find mine, but... Hold up, I forgot to tell you something. Knowing me, that bag's probably empty, so let me give you a little something to get you started. Alright, we got five bombs to start off with, and we throw them or roll them to blow up even hard objects. Try to pick up and store them whenever you come, ac come across any. So, okay, with the bomb flowers, we actually just need to pick up and then we can store them in our bomb bag. So we can count that as the amount of bombs that we can carry. That makes sense. If you run out of bombs, just find some more and fill the bag back up. When you've got a bomb flower, press B and put it in the bag. Don't forget, that bag can hold up to 10 bombs. So if you run across bomb flowers, be sure to fill up the bag. Indeed, I'll take that into account, Mr. Magma Lead. Whose name is Lead. Anyway, yeah, that's all you have to do with the bomb flowers. You just... When you pick one up, you just hit the B button and you'll safely store it into your bomb bag and that will add more to the pouch. Now there are upgrades for the bomb bag, but evidently we do not have them with us quite yet. Alright, so anyway, there was a ladder right here. Let's go ahead and check out some of the stuff that's right here. Ooh, red rupee! And there's a blue rupee, so we got ourselves 25 rupees. Very nice. Can we jump onto here and get over here? Probably can. Yes, we can! What can we get over here? Oh! We can dig some stuff up right here. Oh, look at the little fairy! Come here, you can heal me while you're in the while you're at it. Oh cool. 25 more rupees, and we got ourselves some Elden Ore. Very good. Okay, it's time for us to roll on this big huge ball again. And as I said, when you're rolling on the ball, make sure you stop periodically so that way you can catch your footing on this thing so that way you don't slip off. Because trust me, if you fall, I mean, if you keep going from wherever position you're at, you will fall off the ball. I've experienced that, so be careful. And I think we have some more Keese disease to run into while we're over here, but I'm not... Oh, yes, we are. Oh, dang it. I wanted to throw it up on there! Dude! Get back down here. Uh, don't, don't fall off. Oh, thank you. You did not fall off. And there's a treasure chest right there. Is that a small key or is that the map of the place? Well, won't know until we find out, now will we? So let's check it out. Or is it some Elden Ore again? Probably is, but let's see. No, it's not! We got ourselves a Golden Skull, and it's a rare, real rarity among skull ornaments. It shines, it, I mean, it shines with an eerie golden color. So yes, this is the other type of skull aside from the older metal skull. We got ourselves a Golden Skull. And these things are quite rare in terms of the collectibles, so if you see one, pick it up. You're gonna need it if you're gonna, if you're going to synthesize your items later on. Alright, we're done here, so let's get back on our big huge ball. And let's go this way. And I know there is another magma spume right over here somewhere, so we're going to need to destroy it in order to get it to not hit us. Get over here. Die! And you've been dead. And we got ourselves another treasure chest right here. Now, hopefully, this is the map. No, it's not. We got ourselves a blue bird feather. Very few small birds possess this sky blue plumage. Make, making these feathers extremely rare. So yeah, we got ourselves another extremely rare item. So that's very unusual that we would find it there. I was thinking we would probably get ourselves a map already, but evidently that's not the case. Okay, go ahead and grab this. And uh, let's go ahead and dig this up. 
And nothing else. We just got two rupees right in there. Yeah, nothing else in here. And uh, I think we're going to be using... Dude, keys, get away. Or fire keys. We're actually going to... Dude, quit bothering me. We're actually going to be using the ball here, and we're going to actually push this. And by pushing this, this will actually make a platform for us. But evidently, it's not enough to get on the other side, so we're definitely going to need to go around and make our way around over there. So, I will meet you back, guys back there in just a second. Evidently, we can't get around it just yet, so we're definitely going to need to destroy it somehow. If we can. Or maybe we can get around it. Who knows? Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get around it, so we're definitely going to need to find some way to get around this object. If we can find it, I hopefully... But hopefully there is a place where we can actually try to get around the get around the whole thing. Eh, uh, let's see. Unless we have to use Beetle for the job. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to use Beetle for this job either. So, hmm, I'm in quite a pickle, it seems. around here somewhere. And we definitely can't even raise that thing even further, so... Okay. You guys are going to me off. Dig for some more goodies. Okay, now, let's see. We actually do need to come this way, and we actually do need to throw a bomb onto here. By throwing a bomb up here, that will actually break that debris right there, so that way we can go and explore this way. But of course, by coming this way, we have ourselves a Lizalfos that we have to deal with. Okay, that Lizalfos was pretty easy, so that was good to know that we can defeat it like that. Alright gamers, um, since we made it this far, and since we're about to go check out what's beyond that door, I think this is probably a good spot to where we can go ahead and we can close things off here. So next time on Double RPG Let's Play, with the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword on the Nintendo Wii, we're going to resume where we left off, and we're, gonna, we're just going to go beyond that door to see what we can find. Hopefully we can find something that will help us destroy that pillar that's far at the far end there so that way we can actually get over to that other contraption so that way we can set off that switch and we can create a platform out of that other thing so that way we can go up further inside the temple all right gamers take care of yourselves and i shall see you on the next episode thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys then